About 150 days ago, I started using the LG C2 42-inch OLED TV as my Mac's main monitor. I published a video shown on the screen on YouTube, talk about what are my likes and dislikes. In this video, I'm going to discuss whether I still like it and what changes I have made since then. This is what my setup looked like five months ago. This is how it looks like today. Two obvious changes are, first, I removed the Dell 43-inch LCD computer display from my setup. The second is, I replaced Samsung LCD TV with another LG C2 OLED TV. In fact, I made another change. Instead of using the stand which came with the TV, I wall-mounted the TV slash monitor. In the video I made five months ago, I had two major complaints or dislikes about this monitor. First, the 120Hz refreshing rate issue. Due to the Mac hardware limitation, it doesn't support 120Hz refresh rate, no matter what options I tried. There's a, a little bit kind of new finding on the screen. You can see the Mac OS display setting. By default, the system provides you four options about the text size. I always use the very last one, which is the native 4K display. No matter which one you select, for example, even now I select this one. On the LG TV's remote, you click the three dots button. Then in the menu, you select information. You can see it's 4K display, right? That means now for 60 Hz, it's still 4K display. But you do have the option of 120 Hz. If you do select it, now it seems it's effective, right? But if you check the on-screen display again, it's a disappointing 1440 resolution. That means in 4K resolution, the 120Hz is still not supported by the Mac for this particular TV. But in fact, this 120Hz thing is not my concern at all because in my day-to-day -day uses, I never need 120Hz for my Mac. Maybe it's important for some people, but not for me. In the video I made five months ago, I mentioned another problem, blurry text. That problem only happens when first, the font is not black and white. Second, the font size is very, very small. Third, I have to stare at the text very closely. In my day-to-day -day usage, I rarely have that type of use case. So I have never really noticed the blurry text in the past five months. To be honest. When I use my Mac, more than 50% of the time, I use terminal. This is my typical screen layout when I use it. As you can see, there are only text, nothing else on the screen. I don't notice any blurry text issue in the normal viewing distance. Because of the screen size, I have to sit relatively far away from the screen. As I mentioned, the blurry texting only happened when your text is very, very small. Because I sit very far from the screen, because the screen is 4K, I don't need to have very small font. As long as the font is large enough, you won't be able to see any blurry text effect. This is just my feeling. What I want to say is it doesn't really bother me at all. Next, let's talk about why I removed the Dell computer display from my setup. So this is just a demonstration diagram. Left side, I have the LG OLED TV. The right side is the 43-inch Dell monitor. If I sit in the middle, if I want to see the corners clearly for my two monitors, Many times I have to either move here to see the LG or move here to see the Dell. It's not very convenient. If I choose to sit in the middle and the best part I can see is the gap or the edges of the two monitors. It's a waste for both monitors. Basically, I cannot completely utilize two huge monitors at the same time. So I decided to only leave the LG OLED TV as my main display. 
Now it's time to talk about the new addition to my system, the LG C2 65-inch OLED TV. Five months ago, after I purchased the 42-inch OLED TV as my Mac monitor, I really like it. And because I also have gaming consoles, I don't want to use the small TV as my gaming console because I enjoyed sitting back far away from the TV to play video games. So I decided to buy another OLED TV from LG. That's why I have two C2 OLED TVs now. Let me use this diagram to explain how I connect different devices to these two OLED TVs. Take a look at the 42 inch one. It has only four HDMI ports. I connected them all. So the main Mac is a Mac mini. It's in HDR format. I also have two very, very old Mac Pro. I use them one for ESXi server to run Mac virtual machines. The other one to run very old Mac OS. I also have a Linux physical machine based on a Intel mini PC. For three of the computers, they all support 4K. Only the new Mac support HDR. For the EXXI server, it only has a very poor display resolution, but it doesn't matter because theoretically it can run even in headless mode. So I don't really need a display. It's just in case I hook it up with a HDMI cable. So I used all the four inputs for this 42 inch TV. For the 65 inch one, I have two gaming consoles connected to it. Xbox Series X, the display is in Dolby Vision and the PS5 is in HDR10 format. So this OLED TV can support both perfectly. And the third connection, I hook it up with a Apple TV 4K. So it also support the Dolby Vision format. I have been using this type of setup for several months. It runs smoothly, perfectly. I enjoy using them day by day. The only problem I have so far is the conflicting remotes. So normally people don't have the same brand TVs in the same room, right? So normally people don't have this type of problem. But because I use them in the same room and they have the exact same type of remotes, yes, I can pair them so that when I change channel, adjust volume, do setting changes, right, they won't conflict with each other. But the power on and off button does. It's very annoying. For example, I have this smaller TV on and the bigger one off and I want to turn the bigger one on. If I click, no matter which remote I use, I click the power on button, the smaller one will be switched off off and the bigger one will be switched on. Very annoying. Many times I have to manually use the small buttons on the TV to switch on and off. So that's the only problem I have so far. If you know a solution, let me know. And in the diagram, I also mentioned how I mount them. Another big change I introduced since last time I published the five months old video, I wall mounted this 42 inch TV using the Ergotron wall mount. This is the Ergotron wall mount arm, which I use for my 42 inch OLED TV. Yes, the price is not cheap, but in the market, I really couldn't find any wall mount arms, which can support the weight, the size of the 42 inch monitor with reasonable price. So this is the only one I could find. It can support the movement in whatever directions you can think of. And once you adjust it, the TV will stay at that position without any movement. It's very solid. So I'm very satisfied with this monitor arm. Because this is a monitor arm, we are using a TV with it. So you need a Visa adapter. I just bought a cheap one from Amazon in the right side. By using this two, you can wall mount the TV without any problem. The reason I choose the wall mount instead of table mount is I really want to have a very clean desktop. I happen to have space between the wall and my table, so I can use that space to move the monitors back and forth.
Okay, this is the end of the video. If you have any experience using this OLED TV as your Mac monitor, please leave comments. Thank you.